What's going on, people? I haven't had my computer in a while. It's the first time I've I've, I've had my own computer in what seems like forever. Um, it, it was it was broke, and I fixed it, and it, something else broke in it, and I took it to the computer the computer repair shop, and they held it hostage for like over a month. I don't know what was up with that, but um anyway, I'm behind on some of the videos I wanted to make so I'm going to try to cover a lot of stuff in this one video so it might be a little long um, if you're into metaphysics or, or comedic science you've undoubtedly come across Christians talking that yin yang about how evil it is etc etc and we can see the irony because we know their religion is copied from the very thing they're trying to criticize but they don't know that so they think it's a legitimate argument they don't know much about any other religions and what little they do know is always like some Christian spin that's just how it goes and, and it seems like the message I always seem to get is, is Christians trying to argue that comedic gods are they aren't godly and they're like degenerates and the only story they seem to know is the contendings of Horus and Set so they always come to me with that story so I'm going to use that story to illustrate some points. The contendings of Horus and Set. Okay, let me. Most of you are probably familiar with this story, but let me just give the quick summary of it. Okay, the story is about the battles between Horus or Heru and Set or Seth, and their battle for the throne. Set has killed Osiris, and now they are, or or killed Os Osar, and now they are. Um, Horus and Set are, are fighting to take the take the throne in, Os in Osiris' place. At this point, the story is set when Heru is a child, so Set is using that against him, saying that he's not fit to rule. So what they have to do is they have to go through these series of contests to see which one will have the, will earn the right to take the title of um, the ruler of Kemet. In these trials, in these contests, it kind of goes back and forth, but a lot of interesting things happen. Um, they don't really get into fights because Heru is a little kid, but they have these little, these little matchups and things like that. And so after they go back and forth in these matchups, there's still no, there's still no winner. And so Set tries to rape Horus. So he goes into Horus's room and he tries to rape Horus. But Horus tricks him and he catches Set's semen in his hands. Now Isis, Heru's mother, uh, has him throw set semen away, and she gets uh, Heru to put his semen on uh, some lettuce because lettuce is Set's favorite food. So when Set eats the lettuce, he actually eats Heru's semen. Now they go to trial, and when they go to trial, Set says, "Well, Heru is not fit for um, he's not fit to rule because he's 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 feminine." I, I I performed the actions of, of a woman on him. He is like a woman to me. And he said that I can prove it. I, I can call my I can call my semen. Um, I can call it forth, and you will see it come from Heru's body. Therefore, you will know that I made a woman out of Heru. So he tries to call for the semen, and the semen answers from this distant place, nowhere in the courtroom, which means it was never in Heru's body. So Heru says, "Well, I can call my semen forth, and it will come from Set." So Heru calls his semen forth, and the semen comes out of Set's body in the form of a uh, sun disk. So everyone now feels that Set is the one that had performed the functions of a woman. So they feel that he's unfit to lead. So they start spitting on him, and they don't allow him to. They don't allow him to rule. At the end, uh, Heru is awarded the throne. He becomes the new king of Kemet, while Set is given a, a position um, in the sky with the god Ra on his daily journeys across the sky as, as the sun. So her and um, set station is to be the thunderstorm in the sky. So he becomes a thunderstorm while Heru becomes the ruler of uh, Kemet. Now that is a, an interesting story and it's a very strange story especially if you don't really understand the mythology and what you're looking at and what you're reading. Now that story it's actually most likely a satire. It's meant to be funny. It's not necessarily a serious story. And you can kind of tell that by the things that happen. Like, Set is portrayed as a, as comedically stupid. He's like a uh, he's a complete lummox. He's not intelligent whatsoever. He's just like a complete blockhead. It's like for comedic effect. And there are other things that are in there that seem to be uh, comedic. Like there's a, there's a scene where 
Ra is giving judgment and they and one of the people says, um, Oh well Ra, your temples are empty. And so Ra is so saddened by that he falls down and he cries. So then his daughter Hathor or Hetheru comes over and she shows him her vagina because she is like um all these depictions of the, they're like caricatures of how the gods actually are. Because Hathor is the a goddess of sex and love. So it's, it's exaggerated. So she's flashing her father. And this makes Rob bust out laughing. And he gets up and he goes about his duties for the next day or whatever. So all these things are caricatures. All the gods are caricatured and they, and they are exaggerations of their of their normal selves. But it's a, it, it appears to be a satire, much like we have Christian satire today, which is not that common. I mean, not that uncommon, rather. Oh, uh, let me light that for you, babe. Wow! Yeah, magic fingers. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What? Get the Escalade, we're out of here! Now, in the story, this is used to say that the gods are the gods are not worthy of worship and things like that. And they say the gods do all these bad things. But it's interesting that the only god doing something bad in this story is Set. Which makes sense, since Set is basically their god of evil. And the reason that Seth is depicted so bad in this light is because at this time, Seth is the god of the Hyksos. So because he is the god of the Hyksos, they are presenting him in a bad light. That's why he's, he's doing the things he's doing. He's trying to rape Heru. Uh, Seth was often portrayed as a sexual deviant and other negative things. <clears throat> you don't see, you don't see uh, Heru being the one trying to rape Set. It's like one-sided. It's, it's set trying to rape at root. You may, you may, maybe, you know, it, there is possible that there does exist a version where um, Heru tries to rape Set too. Just, you know, just a natural thing to do. If you're telling that story over and over again, you're gonna add different versions to it. But in any, so far as I know, no official version does ever go the other way. It's always Set being portrayed as as the negative one because homosexuality is condemned. They try to use this as a as, as saying that the Egyptians condone homosexuality, which is bizarre because the whole point was it was condemned. Because of the homosexual act, Seth was not deemed fit to rule because they were against homosexuality. They were actually homophobic, in, in my opinion. But um, the thing about that story is it's a myth, and like I've like I said in my other, in my other video about uh, the comedic gods, they are not literal in the first place. These are not literal people doing these things. When you see things like um, uh, Heru putting semen on the cabbage that is a, most likely a mythological explanation for a natural event like when they say um, when they say lettuce not cabbage when they say lettuce Egyptian lettuce is not like a head of lettuce that we have in the stores today here in America Egyptian lettuce was a plant that secreted this milky semen like substance so this myth is like a, a mythological explanation for why that substance is there. They're just giving you an explanation for why it's there. It's like in the Bible where they say after Yahweh floods the earth, he puts a he puts his bow, his, his bow that he shoots the uh, bow like a bow and arrow. He puts a bow in the sky, and that's supposed to be the origin of the rainbow. Um, just like there was a talking snake in the Garden of Eden that told Eve to eat the fruit. Because of that sin, Yahweh removed his legs and made him crawl in his belly, and that's why snakes don't have arms and legs. You know, these are all mythological origins. They're not to be taken literally. Now, like I said, Set was the Hyksos' god. Now, the Hyksos were, were these Semitic people that came down from Palestine or Canaan. And they came to Egypt, and there's different theories on how they, how they did this, but they came to rule Egypt, or as they say rule Egypt. It's actually a part of Egypt, but a lot of times they, when you read about it, they will say they ruled Egypt. No, they never ruled Egypt. They ruled a part of Egypt. Um... There's some theories about it, different theories of how that happened, but the strongest theory seems to be that it was a very it was a peaceful takeover. They didn't actually uh, fight and conquer any of the commissions. They sort of just came there and just populated and just grew until eventually they were they were rulers of that part of Kemet. Since they are Semitic, um, they it suggests that they might either be the Jews, the Israelites, the ancient Israelites, or they were related to them in some way. Um, Josephus says that the Hyksos were the Jews, so they, they were the Jews of Exodus, the Hyksos. Further making them similar to the Jews is that the Hyksos worshipped only one God, and the only God they worshipped was Set. When they came to Egypt, Set was the only God they worshipped. 
and, and we know this because there was a, a, a papyrus um, that tells the story of one of the one of the um, uh, one of the Hyksos kings. His name was King Apophis or King Ap Apep, <coughs> and it says that so King Apophis adopted Seth for himself as as lord, and he refused to serve any god that was in the entire land except Seth. So that tells us that they only had one god, and that that was Seth. Another another commentary on the Hyksos was from Queen Hatshepsut, and she was talking about how she had gotten rid of them or their or their structures or whatever, and she pointed out that um, the Hyksos ruled, but they did not have they did not rule with Ra, and so therefore they were removed. But anyway, the Hyksos were kicked out, eventually kicked out of Kemet, um, like a century or so later, <coughs> and they were sent back to Canaan. In Canaan, they did not call their god Set; that was his Egyptian name. Their god's name was Hadad. Hadad and Set were the same deity. They were recognized as being one and the same. So when they say that the Hyksos only had Set as their god, what they really mean is that they only had Hadad as their god. Hadad was the Canaanite god of storms. And Set was the god of storms. So they were recognized as being the same deity. The Semites, like the Greeks, they revered the storm gods the most, which is why you always see gods like um like you know you always hear you always hear people say that the Lord's gonna strike you down, the Lord's gonna strike you down because people associate God with lightning because all the main gods in this in this area of the world were storm gods. You had Hadad, um the Greeks had Zeus, that was their top god. Um the Jews had Yahweh, that was their top god. Yahweh was a sky god too, a storm god. If you read the passages he's a storm god too. Enlil for the Sumerians, he was also a storm god. That was their idea. That was their highest concept of God was the storm. Um, but being Africans, the Egyptians, on the other hand, were, were people of the sun. So they revered Ra as their highest god, not Set. Set is Zeus, is y uh, Yahweh, is Hadad. These are all basically the same deity in different forms. But that was not the main deity of the of, of the Canaanites. Their main deity was Ra. What's interesting is that the Hyksos were either the Israelites themselves or the Canaanites whose land the Israelites went to live on. When the Israelites went to Canaan, they adopted Canaan culture, Canaanite culture, and Canaanite gods. They took the traits of the Canaanite god Baal and merged them into Yahweh, and Yahweh and Baal were even identified by the Israelites as being the same god at various times. Um, this is indicated in the Bible itself. Baal is set. This means that Set is essentially one and the same as Yahweh. This act, the, I'm not going to go too far into that because that would be a whole video in, in and of itself. Actually, I'm going to point you to a video. You can go to this video right here. This will show you, this will give you um, a more in-depth look at the connection between Yahweh and Hadad slash Set. So Set, the Egyptian's devil, is in some aspects the Jews' God. This is important because you'll often hear people say that Satan comes from Set or Setian, wherever they get that word from. But that isn't true. It's not, it's not that he comes from Set. It's actually much, much heavier than that. Satan is just a Hebrew word for that means adversary. It has no relation to the name Set whatsoever. Satan wasn't even an evil Set-like character yet at the time um, that the Hyksos and the Jews were first in Egypt. Satan only became evil like after the Old Testament was written, so that connection is not there. Set is not their Satan. Set is actually their God. The Commission's devil being the Semites' God sort of symbolizes how these alien Semitic religions are the natural ending of Kemetic, of, um, Kemetic and to a large extent African culture in general. Um, religion is a major part of a person's identity. Your religion shapes your worldview. Gods correspond with their people, and people correspond with their gods. Set became despised because he was the god of the Hyksos, and the Hyksos were a despised people. Set was originally viewed as a good god, but by his association with the Hyksos, he became demonized until he basically became the Egyptian version of Satan because of his association with that group. So why is that important? Well, I, I see like... Um, like black nationalist types and other people saying that we stop worrying about and talking about religion. They say it doesn't matter what we quote unquote call ourselves because we're all in the same struggle. Okay, that's true, but I, I to an extent, but I, I, I hate when people say that because we don't just call ourselves something. 
we call ourselves titles based on our ideology. It's not we're not just doing it. It's not like it's unimportant. These titles mean something. They when you call yourself say a a, a Christian, that signifies something. Some people can't help with the struggle that all of us as black people are enduring because they have an ideology that perpetuates it. So it's counterproductive to have them or to try to work with them to solve that problem because they're not ready mentally to help you do it. Like uh, black Christians have a false world view that prevents them from properly aiding in the struggle. They don't see themselves as a black people. They don't think that way. They just think in terms of Christian and non-Christian. So they don't even have that category in their mind. Like a lot of people, a lot of people think religion is important when they're starting a movement. They think, well, let's get a bunch of black people together. It's just if they're black, they're in. No, but it's, it, it, religion is important. Like I said, it forms your worldview. So it's not necessarily as simple as getting everybody that's black together, and then we, we're all going to be on. Since we're all in the same struggle, we're all going to fight for the same goals. That's we're not going to do that. There was a nationalist on. There's a black. There was a, a nationalist on YouTube. I'm not. I don't like to say people's names, but there was a nationalist on YouTube. And he would try to work with black Christians and Hebrew Israelites to start, I don't know what he was trying, I guess he was trying to start a community or something. I don't, I don't actually know what he was trying to do, but he was working with them because his philosophy was that, well, we're all, we're all brothers, so our little differences like that are not going to matter. So he tried to work with them, but he realized after a while that his plan was failing and it was not going to happen because the people he was working with either couldn't see blacks as a collective people and or where they were waiting for Jesus or Yahweh to save them. So he, he was he was realizing that that was not working out. So he had to abandon them. So now he's not even with them. He's like, well, fuck them. I can't. They they never go. They never going. They're never going to get around to helping me out because they're not. You know, they're not. Their heads are not in it. They can't do it. And I was watching this because I, I would see him every now and then. I never watched him like all that much, but I was seeing him every now and then when it happened. I was like, yeah. What did you What did you think was going to happen? I mean, this is not a This is not like some trivial thing. Your religious outlook is a very important aspect of your, of your, of your, of your, of your thought process. So, so of course, if you have like a messed up thought process, it's going to affect you in other areas. You, you can't just isolate it. It's not just dinner time conversation. It's a major aspect of how they go about their day and how they think, how they view the world. So it, it didn't work out. So does that does that mean I dislike my Christian brothers and sisters? No, I mean on a social level I can get along with them. I can hang out with them. One. That's not a problem. But I wouldn't try to start any kind of movement with them while they're in that Christian program because basically they're co-opted by the very system of oppression that we're trying to fight. So it, it wouldn't work out. It's the, it goes it goes both ways. It's just like how how the devil became God. God became the devil. Black Christians self-hate their own native spirituality or any kind of old God concept. They despise that because they despise anything that's not Jewish. They have no mental association with their own history because they follow the Bible's fictitious history. They're on their they're basically on the enemy's side and they're against their own selves, and that includes you. Now recently we basically had a, a public um, illustration of this with this the, the Haiti incident and Pat Ro and Pat Robertson saying that stupid shit he was talking about a pack with Satan. Christy, something happened a long time ago in Haiti, mm -hmm. and uh, people might not want to talk about it. They were under the heel of the French, uh, you know, Napoleon the mm -hmm. Third and whatever, and they got together and swore a pact to the devil. They said, we will serve you if you'll get us free from the French. Mm. It's a true story. And so the devil said, okay, it's a deal. And uh, they kicked the French out. You know, the Haitians revolted and got themselves free. But ever since, they have been cursed by, by one thing after the other, desperately poor. That island of Hispanola is one island. Mm -hmm. It's cut down the middle. On the one side is Haiti. On the other side is the Dominican mm -hmm. Republic. Yeah. Dominican Republic is, is prosperous, mm -hmm. healthy, full of resorts, etc. Mm -hmm. Haiti is in desperate poverty. Same island. Sure. Uh, they need to have, and we need to pray for them, a mm -hmm. great turning to God. Mm -hmm. And out of this tragedy, I'm optimistic something good may come. Because as a Christian, Pat Riley, I mean, I don't know why I keep calling Pat Riley. Pat Robertson is saying that these people, he's, he's most likely referring to an event where the Haitians got together and they supposedly, according to some accounts, 
they prayed they had a spiritual they had a spiritual gathering to prepare themselves to fight the French and so they prayed to their gods or whatever and they had their they, they rallied and they overcame their enemies now Pat Robertson and Christianity in general is against this they don't want you to have that power so he's trying to demonize it by saying they're praying to Satan because anything that's not Jewish is Satan so therefore this is some evil pact with the devil and now God quote unquote is punishing them for doing what they had to do to overcome their oppressors now you may think that and I think that a lot of people do think this think that this is some isolated incident or that people don't really think like this but no they do Christians actually do think like this this is this is for real this is not a game I had a, I had someone actually like basically say the same thing to me we were talking about um he's a Christian and we we're talking about uh, black heritage and basically uh, he just said flat out look I, he's he's trying to convince me that he has he has pride in his black heritage and uh, even though he's a Christian and I'm saying I don't really see how those two go together but basically he can't after right just came out and said it like point blank these African nations they were pagan so if God kills them so what I'm not gonna cry about it I don't care because they're not Christian they deserve what they get I mean he said that to me point blank like because that is the mindset of a Christian so this is what you're dealing with so if you are a, a nationalist type you can't just hand wave this and just and act like the issue is not important Christianity and these religions these all these Abrahamic religions are a major a major detriment to the black community it's not something that you can just skip over you have to deal with it it's not you know it's not a game it's not a joke this is why you get all these ridiculous Illuminati Satan worshiper hip-hop conspiracy theories because black Christians ignorantly associate commit or any non-Jewish spirituality with Satan because God is the devil to them everything is backwards God is the devil to them the devil is God to them bad is good and good is bad everything with them is flipped because they have the mind state of their enemies they don't they're 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 just they're mixed up they're confused now a, a lot of us who are who are conscious about religion commit etc are arrogant and like keeping knowledge to ourselves so we can feel superior we like to look down on on people who are who don't know who have not studied people like Christians or your average person who has not actually studied you know and just watches BET all day or something we like to look down on them and just laugh at them but I think that when we see ignorance like this from like black Christians we should start calling them out on it and try to teach them whether it works or not I think we should just do it like when you're on it when you're on YouTube and you're watching like a, a, a music video and you're seeing all these comments about the Illuminati and anytime somebody does anything associated with connect you have these like three or four Christians just out of their damn mind talking about oh Satan is Lucifer is I Lucifer they they're all worshiping Satan and they're eating children and all that shit you got you got to say something about that. I mean, it may seem small, like just like what's a YouTube video, but it adds up. Like, cause I remember when I when I first started to see it, it was like really strong. That Illuminati thing should not have gotten as big as it was. It was really big. It got to the point where every time I would look at a, a music video, the message, I mean, the board would be comments page would be filled with that stuff. Now people are starting to call, like they're starting to die a lot because. People was, was checking them on it, like you couldn't just say it anymore because it got to the point where people got tired of saying it. And when you would say it, people that did have the knowledge, people that was into the science, would, would step up and and, and 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 teach them, like you know, and and, and and challenge them on it, so they wouldn't just just say that stupid shit and not you know and not meet any resistance. So that has helped. Now that I think that will translate into the real world because. As popular as this has become, it would likewise become popular if you did it the other way and started putting that information out there and, and fighting them on that, not letting them get away with saying all that Satan worshiper shit and trying to associate everything with their with their um, their black heritage as being satanic and demonic and evil and all that. There should never be like there should never be like I just saw the other day like um, when Nas is, is doing a, is doing a, an, an interview. In the interview, he has a hat with the eye of horse on the side, and you see these people talking about, oh, "Nas, you sell out, you sell out, you saw out to the Illuminati, you devil worship faggot, blah blah blah, blah. just going, just going nuts because they saw that eye with no fucking idea of what it represents. 
Now, if you listen to Nas, you would know why he's wearing that eye of horse. He's wearing it because he studied. The guy's read books. He's he's read Van Sertima books. He's been to Africa, so he's done the knowledge. He knows, you know, he knows this stuff. It's you can see that in the songs. You can see that when he speaks. Like even in that movie, um, movie he did Belly. It's a very interesting scene in Belly where they was showing you, like Nas was showing you, he was reading the books. And his part in the DMX, they was they were in the car. It was a scene where they were in the car, and they were showing you the contrast between what Nas was going through, how he was learning, versus like the average nigga, how the average nigga is ignorant of shit. So they were sitting in the car next to each other. And the guy at DMX was making fun of him because the dude, because because Nas was trying to expand his mind. He was reading these books. So Nas was like, "How many books?" Did he? he said, "When was the last time you read a book?" <laughs> and DMX, <laughs> DMX's character said, "Never, motherfucker," and, and was proud of the shit. He was like proud of being ignorant. So they were showing you the contrast, and at the end, DMX's character becomes a Christian with his ignorant ass. And Nod goes on to do whatever he did, but he was showing you even back then that he was reading. That's how he, that's why he was putting it into the character because that's what he was really doing. He was really at that time he was really reading. He was really getting up on on the knowledge and learning these things. So that's why he's wearing the eye of horse because he knows what it is. He knows what it represents. But when, but people that don't understand that they are just immediately calling him a Satanist and things like this and part of the quote unquote Illuminati. They have no idea what the Illuminati is in the first place, but they like to say it. So I think that we need to we need to start you know checking that a little bit, man. Because we at at the end of the day, the fact is this: as unfortunate as it is, a lot of the black population is Christian or Abrahamic, you know, following the Bible or whatever, whichever flavor of of, of Bible following they want to do, whether it be Jew, Christian, or or Muslim, whatever. We are one of those. A lot of us are falling in that category. So if we really want to help improve ourselves as a people, we can't afford to let ignorance-based ignorance-based self-hate go unchecked like that. We gotta do something about it. We have to act. So that's basically what I'd say about that. Is like you know, it is what it is. The concepts of God and Satan basically get, basically have gotten flipped um, in these in these <clears throat> these Abrahamic religions, and a lot of us are falling for it. And the only person that's going to get us, get us out of it is us, because the people, the our oppressors, that is exactly where we want us to be. They, that's, this is exactly where they want us to be, uh, praising Jesus and being afraid of anything that can help us. So, I think that every little bit helps. So when we, when we see this, we got to start getting into the habit of just not letting this slide. You got to start getting into the habit of, of 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 pointing things out to people and letting them know, so we can stop having all these niggas afraid of their own shadow. And thinking that they need Christ to walk down the stairs or go outside and all that shit, and 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 and, and just basically just just be whole, just be whole as a people. So that's pretty much all I gotta say about that. Um, wow, see this video went really long, so we'll see how many people actually sit through and watch it to the end. Peace.